Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hara Canucks and the way OnePlus has built its reputation is quite fascinating. Now removing the flagship killer branding with the latest launch of the OnePlus 3, effectively placing this smartphone to be the best device within its price class. However, OnePlus has done such a great job of sort of meandering itself into the higher tier market that the OnePlus 3 right now is being compared to phones twice its price. So the S7 lines, the HTC 10, the iPhone 6S, um, and that is both awesome in nature and detrimental or could be detrimental to the success of the OnePlus 3. The Z9 Neo by Zalman brings all the right features on a budget. With a large windowed side panel, five included fans and an excellent interior layout with super simple cable management. Get it now, link in the description below. So I've been using the OnePlus 3 for a month now and man, it's such a fantastic upgrade over the OnePlus 2. Uh, it's lighter, it's thinner, it's more beautiful and most importantly, it's still affordable, no invite needed. I love that we only have a 64 gigabyte model but with only 53 gigabytes available, it's a bit misleading but that's become the expectation of expecting about 80 to 85 percent of available capacity for storage. The rest of the specs are pretty awesome and everyone was wowed by the six gigabytes of RAM only to be disappointed by poor uh, RAM management and some issues that arise there. But I could run 14 apps at the same time without needing to reload them and I'm totally okay with that and you should be too. Now quality user experience uh, with the device should not come from the materials alone. It's a little bit too slippery for me unless I put a case which by the way covers the fairly large lens bump. It doesn't bother me physically but uh, it is a popular thing to hate on but there is merit of needing to be extra careful not to crack the fairly large lens. The buttons have improved drastically over the OnePlus 2 without any rattle now, very clicky registration and the alert slider is resistant enough with locking confidently in all three positions. And I wish more Android phones had this feature. I put it to the silent mode when going to bed and priority when I don't want to be disturbed. Uh, the dual nano SIM tray is just for SIMs. Everybody's kind of upset about uh, having no additional storage with micro SD here but we have 64 gigabytes so that should be enough the fingerprint sensor is faster than my s7 sitting in between two lovely elegant capacitive buttons that can be swapped or enabled on screen buttons for easier control for smaller hands now the major update for me here is the display which is still 1080 but now an AMOLED so contrast is brilliant and side by side to my s7 I honestly cannot tell the difference in color reproduction with the latest update uh, you can now enable sRGB color space with more accurate but less vibrant colors so they're a little bit more natural plus we have uh, temperature adjustment on the fly and night mode to get rid of blue light before you sleep however OnePlus is in hot waters for using a pentel panel which effectively reduces the resolution from 1080 to something lower and yes you can notice the pixelation of text on screen you know if you look like this or if you have a really sharp eye and comparing this screen to my s7 absolutely the difference is there you could say it's pretty major especially if you look at text of thumbnails on YouTube it's one of those technical drawbacks that yes should be mentioned but in my daily user experience it wasn't really noticeable the brightness range is good, phone speaker is clear, and most importantly, when you talk on speakerphone, you no longer experience the disgusting echo that we had on the OnePlus 2. The USB-C connection at the bottom is only for the interface. It's quite convenient, but it is a USB 2.0 transfer speed. But now we have this dash charging, which is actually super awesome to charge your phone 60% of the battery in just 30 minutes while keeping the heat away from the phone, since the charger is now handy the power management and I'm curious to see how this will impact battery life in six months 
because as of now it's pretty awesome full day no problem with a quick juice up in the evening if you're pulling an all-nighter i like the photo camera you can launch it through double tapping the home button or the power button plus the app is good to adjust incremental exposure you have raw support which is actually quite awesome to recover some of those highlights since this camera tends to overexpose and uh, also work with an uncompressed image if you're into that. The video detail in 4K is actually good, but stabilization, bitrate, and focus are just disappointing all around. You can check out our video here, while the front selfie cam is actually not bad. And so as a $399 smartphone, the OnePlus 3 is better than expected. If I didn't lash out the money on the S7, I would have stuck with the OnePlus 3 as my daily driver. The only real disappointment here for me is the lack of 60 frames per second playback on YouTube, as that plays at 480p maximum. The standard 1080p video plays just fine, but if you're going over 30 frames per second playback, this cannot handle it. Uh, for some reason, when other Snapdragon 820s and similar spec phones can handle it, no problem. So I know there's everybody's uh, complaining about that and perhaps OnePlus will roll out a software update. And so this month has been a real treat with the OnePlus 3, better than expected. All the familiar features that I've come to know from the OnePlus 2 has carried over like the clean OS and a bunch of customization you can do in OS without having to root it, without having to install any uh, you know custom launchers and whatever. And the OnePlus 3 is a damn good phone. And so that is my experience with the OnePlus 3. Uh, if you're on the fence of picking one up, let's have a conversation down below. I'm Dimitri with Hyrule Canucks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.